Hi class! Today we will discuss the applications of the laws of motion, specifically the second law or the law of acceleration and how it applies to simple machines. First, we have to review the second law of motion. So we learned in class that when forces are unbalanced, that means the net force is not equal to zero. Meaning to say there could be a lot of forces acting on the object, but somehow, when added, these forces result to a non-zero force. For example, an object is resting on the floor, and you apply a force applied of 10 newtons to the right. We know for a fact that this object also has a downward force of gravity and an upward force exerted by the floor, which is the normal force. These two vertical forces counter each other, and thus the net force in this scenario is equal to the force applied. Because it is the only force that is not cancelled by, an, by another force. Thus, the net force is 10 newtons. And whenever this or there is an unbalanced force, the result is acceleration or the object will somehow change its velocity or will undergo a sudden increase or a decrease in its velocity, which we call acceleration. And this acceleration is dependent on the amount of force or net force that acts on the body as well as the mass of the object or how heavy the object is. Now, this um, concept is pretty much visible in our daily life when you're pushing a cart, when stepping on the gas to make the car move, or just on the brakes to make this car stop, or as simple as when you kick a rock that you see on the ground while walking. As mentioned, Acceleration is dependent on the amount of force or net force acting on an object as well as its mass. Now we are ready to solve dynamic problems. Remember that when an object is accelerating, this object is said to be not in equilibrium state. This is Newton's second law in vector form, wherein the summation of forces or net force is equal to the product of mass and acceleration. Usually, we determine the net force using components or relationships in components form. Thus, we have to identify the summation of forces along x and summation of forces along y, and therefore consider also acceleration along the x-axis and acceleration along the y-axis. These are wheels with grooves where ropes pass. This is a common simple machine, and this is the first machine where we will apply or examine the applications of the second law of motion. Examine the scenario. A simple machine wherein table is frictionless. In this simple machine scenario, we have two masses, M1 and M2. We can clearly see that M2 is hanging or is suspended by a rope and disconnected to M1. Now let's assume that M1 is equal to 5 kilograms and M2 is equal to 10 kilograms. Therefore, M2 is greater than M1. Once we release M1, we can say that M1 will move to the right or accelerate to the right, while M2 will accelerate downwards. Given that the two masses are connected by a single rope, we consider this whole scenario or setup as one system. And here are the following assumptions that we can have. Since both masses are connected by a single string, therefore, they must accelerate at, the, at equal magnitudes. Whatever is the acceleration of, the, of mass 1, that is also the acceleration of mass 2. Now, we will determine the acceleration of the system and the tension of the system. 
the tension being the contact force on the rope connecting the two masses. We begin solving this problem by drawing the free body diagram of the two masses. Now, we need two free body diagrams because we have two bodies involved in the system. Let's begin drawing the free body diagram of the first object of mass 1. Since mass 1 is on top of a table, we can say that there are three forces acting on mass 1. These are force of gravity, the downward force due to its mass and its attraction to Earth, and an upward force exerted by the table, the normal force, and the force to the right due to the tension force on the string. Take note that the statement or the problem says the table is frictionless. Therefore, there shouldn't be any force acting opposite the motion of this object. So three forces. Also, you have to take note that the normal force is equal to the gravitational force Fg, but in opposite directions. Next, the free body diagram for the second object or second mass involves two forces only, a downward force Fg and an upward force due to the string, which is tension. Now remember that the object, or mass 2, falls down or accelerates downwards. Therefore, we cannot say that the force of gravity is equal to the tension force. Because if they are equal to each other, then the object must not accelerate at all. Now, we go back to the general formula the net force is equal to mass times acceleration. We will utilize the free body diagram we've drawn to identify the correct equation in solving for acceleration. We'll have two sets of equations. Consider mass 1. First, mass 1 accelerates to the right due to the tension force. And by looking at the free body diagram, we can tell that the acceleration of this object is, is directly proportional to the amount of the tension force. So therefore, if we get the summation of forces along y, we can tell that it is equal to zero because what we have are the normal force and the gravitational force and they equal to zero. On the other hand, the summation of forces along x is simply whatever is the tension force. Therefore, our net force is equal to only the summation of force along x, which happens to be tension. Now, tension is equal then to the mass 1 times acceleration of mass 1. Let's put a pin to this equation. Now we move on to mass number two. Mass two is accelerating downwards. And this acceleration downwards is a negative acceleration because it's moving to the negative direction. Therefore, the general equation for it would be summation of force on mass 2 is equal to mass 2 times its acceleration. But then again, since acceleration, acceleration of mass 2 is downwards, so we can say that the equation must be negative. The net force is equal to the negative of mass 2 times acceleration of mass 2. Now, we have to identify the sum of forces. The sum of forces along x is zero because there are no forces acting on the object along the x. However, in the vertical, the summation of forces is dependent on two variables, the sum of the gravitational force and tension force. In this case, 
the gravitational force will be subtracted to tension force because they are in opposite directions, as we've seen here in the figure. Fg is downwards, tension is upward. Now, since the summation of force or the net force is dependent only on the y, we can say that the net force is equal to the summation of forces along y, and that is tension minus Fg. Here, we can say then that our equation is tension minus Fg, which is the net force, is equal to the negative of mass 2 times acceleration of mass 2. Now, we will consider these two equations to come up with the final equation for acceleration. To come up with an equation for acceleration, remember that when we release mass 1, mass 2 will accelerate downward while mass 1 will accelerate to the right and since they belong to one system or they are connected by one single one string therefore whatever is the acceleration of mass 1 that is also the acceleration of mass 2 and we can write the two equations simply as a on the other hand the tension on mass 1 pulling it to the right is the same as the tension pulling mass 2 up because both masses are connected by one single string. Now remember these assumptions as we write the equation for acceleration of the system. From mass 1, the equation earlier was tension, which is the net force of the system, or of mass 1, is equal to mass 1 acceleration 1. For the second object, mass 2, the equation earlier was tension minus force of gravity or the weight of the object is equal to mass, negative mass 2 times acceleration of object 2. Taking the assumptions we had earlier, we can write the two equations as tension is equal to mass 1 A. On the other hand, the second equation is tension minus gravitational force or the weight of the object is simply mass of object 2 times acceleration due to gravity equals the negative of mass 2 and acceleration. Take note, I removed the subscript because both acceleration of object 1 and 2 are of the same magnitude. Now, since tension in object 1 is the same as the tension in object 2, we will take this equation and substitute it here. Therefore, our equation will come out to be mass 1 acceleration minus mass 2 acceleration due to gravity is equal to the negative m2 acceleration. Okay? Then, you transpose the negative m2g to the right and transpose negative m2a to the left. Our equation will look like m1a plus m2a equals m2g combined or uh, factor out a acceleration a times m1 plus m2 so we factor a out then our equation on the right is m to g now finally to come up with an equation for acceleration you divide the whole equation by m1 plus m2 m1 m2 i'm oh, sorry m1 plus m2 we cancel this and the resulting equation then for acceleration is m2 g over m1 plus m2. Now, all we have to do is to substitute the values. m2 is 10 kilograms. 10 kilograms times negative 9.8 meters per second squared divided by 5 kilograms 
plus 10 kilograms. You can pause the video if you want to compute for the answer. The answer is 6.53 meters per second. Approximately, this is a rounded off value. This is class or, well, negative, but the negative value would be the negative acceleration of M2, but a positive value means the positive acceleration of mass 1. So acceleration 1 is, is 6.53 meters per second squared, while acceleration 2 is negative 6.53 meters per second squared. Take note that the mass, the acceleration of the two are of the same magnitude but different directions. Object two is accelerating downwards while object one is accelerating to the right. One is negative, one is positive. Finally, for the tension force, we had the equation earlier for mass 1, which is tension is equal to mass 1 times acceleration of 1. And we found from the previous slide that acceleration 1 is 6.53 meters per second squared. We simply take the value of mass 1, 5 kilograms, times the calculated 6.53 meters per second squared. And we come up with the value. You can pause the video if you want. The answer is 32, or rather 632.65 newtons. Okay, you can even check the value of tension using the second equation from mass 2. From mass 2, the equation was T minus force of gravity equals negative of mass to acceleration. Now, simply derive T. T is equal to Fg minus M2A, where that is mass 2 times acceleration due to gravity minus M2A. So substitute the values 10 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared. Take note that this is now positive because we have transposed Fg earlier, which is negative. So we cancel the negative then. Minus 10 kilograms times the calculated acceleration, 6.53 meters per second squared. And the answer is roughly almost the same, 32.7 newtons. This is one way of double checking your answers if they match your initial calculations. So that is the first sample problem for the applications of loss of motion.